Hello there! Welcome to PSTV's Drawing Workshop Part 1. This is a guide to drawing with the tablet. Today's agenda includes some introductions, some PSTV history and services, and basically the goal for today's lesson is to learn the basic tools of Photoshop that are applicable to any drawing program and to get tips and tricks for drawing with a tablet. And here's my intro. My name is Judy Tai. I am a recent graduate at Moore College of Art and Design. I have a bachelor's in fine arts for animation and game arts. I'm a Philadelphia native, Go Central T74, and I love developing games on the side. Here are the things you will need. A drawing tablet. Wacom and Hoyan are great manufacturers of drawing tablets. You can get one as cheap as $50 that is already used or get one with a screen and those are usually more expensive. And you'll need some art software. Photoshop, Clip Studio Art, Affinity Photo, and even Microsoft Paint are all workable tools. Another alternative is to get like an iPad with an Apple Pen and some Procreate. And that is a really good combo that many artists use. And if you don't have a tablet, that is no problem. You can always draw on paper with a pencil, ink it over with a pen, and scan it into your art software to color it. In fact, many digital artists start on traditional pencil and paper first and then scan it to color it with or without a drawing tablet. So yes, you can always do digital art even if you don't have a tablet. Now, firstly, um, I will go over the Photoshop tools. First is the brush and eraser, the fill tool, selection tools, and then layers. So here we are in Photoshop. Um, by default, my background is black, but if you were to make a new document, it's probably white, um, but that shouldn't matter. I'll just make a new document here and set the background contents to be white. Um, I'm just working with an eight and a half inches wide paper with 11 inches high. So a standard copy paper and my resolution is at 300 DPI. Um, 300 DPI is a good resolution to have in case you want to print whatever you make. Okay. I'm going to make a new layer here. So first we have the brush tool and you'll notice if you hold on to the tool, you can see you have the brush, pencil, color replacement tool and mixer brush tool. But for this video, we'll just focus on the brush tool. At the very top here, we have our options for our tool. Uh, this here you can see we have tool presets. We don't have any tool presets, so we'll just ignore that. Um, this button here will show you the different brush types or brush tools that you have. I have a lot of custom brushes that I've downloaded um, over, over time. Um, so I'll have something a little bit different from what you have. But you'll always have the general brushes here. And we'll just start with a hard round. Um, mode, you can change your brushes mode to do multiply or color burn or any of these other modes to give a different behavior to your brush. Um, but usually I like to keep it normal. And then opacity. So with opacity, um, the regular brush here is, let's see. Okay, so we have a regular brush here, you know, no special things happening to it. But if you were to reduce your opacity down, you'll see that it actually comes out lighter, but you'll also be able to build it up over time. So that is opacity. It's basically the transparency of your brush. Um, flow is something similar, but not quite like opacity. Um, smoothing is, a, is an option that you'll have to enable on your brush to enable smoothing. So right now it's at 0%. Basically what that means is that um, with my drawing tablet, it'll draw whatever I draw with the tablet 100%. But if I raise the smoothing up, then you'll see that you know, it's actually going to slow down the drawing on the, the paper to be a lot smoother. So I'm just going to delete what I have here. Um, the shortcut for the brush tool is B, so that's a really handy keyboard shortcut to have is B. All right next is the eraser which is the keyboard shortcut E. 
we have basically the same options available to us with different brush tools or brush um, heads and then the opacity flow and smoothing so it's pretty much the same as our brush tool but as the name suggests it just erases what we have on our page so that's pretty much it for the erase tool um, next I think we have our fill tool so the fill tool will as the name suggests fill the you know whatever is on your page with whatever color you pick so right now i'm going to pick a light blue color and fill this page to be a kind of blue color and then um, what you'll auto also notice is that um, with the fill tool options excuse me the keyboard shortcut for the bucket or the fill tool is g so up here we can see that it colors with our foreground color which is the top color on the top right here and our mode is on normal we can also change the opacity of our full tool and then tolerance so um, tolerance the checkbox for um, anti-alias contiguous and all layers is probably the most important options for the fill tool um, so for contiguous let's do something here I'm going to increase my opacity to 100. I'm going to draw a little box here and it'll circle. So with the bucket or the fill tool, contiguous basically means are we going to fill everything that is uh, within bounds, right? So I'm going to reduce my tolerance just a little bit and change our color to be a dark blue. So if I fill in this layer, um, it only goes into that layer or into that square and same thing for this circle if I were to not check that It will basically fill the entire thing um, the bucket or the fill tool will pick will see what you clicked on and um, Basically fill everything that is the same as what you clicked on so I'm clicking on this color blue It's gonna fill everything that has that blue color so Contiguous, fill, I mean, filling everything blue that's in the square and filling everything blue that's in the circle. All layers is an option you can do if you want to sample from all of your layers. So I just made a new layer here and I still have this dark blue color. If I were to fill this empty space on this new layer, It'll fill everything there, but only on the outside, and it's being affected by our layer below. If I were to disable this option and fill it here, um, basically it's saying, oh, you filled, you press on this empty space in this new layer, we're gonna fill the entire layer. So that is what that all layers checkbox means. Okay, just gonna delete these two layers now. Next, we have our selection tools. So the selection tools that we have are the rectangular marquee tool, the elliptical marquee tool, the single row marquee, and the single column marquee. For now, we're going to focus on the rectangular and elliptical marquee tool. So let's do the rectangular one first. So basically selections are one of the most important and most often tools you'll use if you you know stick with drawing digitally in photoshop or any other drawing software for example i can have a scribble here press m for a marquee and drag a rectangle over part of my drawing and i can do a lot of things with this selection for one Whatever you have selected, any tool that you use will only affect that selection. So if I were to draw in this area, you can see that I'm only affecting the selection that I have here. Same thing with erasing. And same thing with the bucket tool. You can also press delete on your keyboard to delete whatever you have selected and control D deselects everything that you have. So if I were to change this to the elliptical marquee tool, you can see that I can drag a circle around my art. And just a note, 
To increase or decrease the size of your brush, you can use the square brackets on your key. So the close, the open bracket will decrease the size and the closing bracket will increase the size. Okay. Um, next in our selection tool is the lasso. So the lasso is really nice because what if you don't want to have a rectangular or an elliptical marquee tool? You want a custom shape. You can do that with the lasso tool. So for example, if I wanted to have a really interesting shape here, something like that, I can lasso that selection and do whatever that I want to do in here and control D to deselect. If we go into this tool by holding down on the icon, we can see that we have some additional tools here, such as the poly polygonal or polygonal lasso tool. So um, the polygonal lasso tool is really nice because you can basically um, make your selection a little bit more angular, a little bit more straight. So for example, if I want to lasso or um, polygonally lasso a triangle, I can do that with the polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to pick a different color here and do that. And control D to deselect. So one other tool that we have available for selection is the magic wand tool. And this is a really, really useful tool to have. With the magic wand tool, what you can do is, uh, I'll make a new layer here, is we'll have um, or probably like a red shape. I don't know, something like that. And with the magic wand tool, I can have it so um, it selects whatever my shape is in here. If I were to select this weird shape tool, I can see that I have a selection of just that. Now, the settings that we can change up here include the contiguous and sample all layers. So if I were to deselect contiguous, um, I would essentially be able to select anything that is this red pinkish color. So if I press W, that's the keyboard shortcut for the magic wand tool, I can select this reddish pinkish color and it'll select everything that has that color. And the tolerance comes into play when you have something that is a similar color, but not quite. So I'm going to put this darker red color in here and my tolerance is at 31 now. So if I were to select this pinkish red color, it'll only select that. But what if I wanted to select everything that was this kind of red color? Well, I can increase my tolerance up all the way up and now it's a little too much because I selected the entire page, but I can increase my tolerance. And when I select this pinkish reddish color, it also selects this darker red circle. So that's what tolerance does. It, it basically um, increases or it decreases kind of the sensitivity of your selection. And sample all layers also applies to sampling on different layers. So I made a new layer. There's nothing in this layer right now, but I can still select things from other layers if I have this option check marked. All right, so that basically goes over our lasso selection tools and our regular marquee selection tools. Um, next is layers. So you'll notice that I have been using layers and what we can do is disable and enable our layers. Our background layer is always going to be there unless we get rid of it, but I'll just keep it there. So we have a layer here and essentially um, when we make a new one, we're making something that's going to be on top of what we already have. So if I were to go to my brush tool and pick a different color and draw in this layer, I'm drawing over what I already have. And this is really nice because you can go in and have basically a layer that is a shape and make a new layer, drag it underneath that green circle layer and do something else. So we're drawing in between our layers. And this is really good because it gives you full control of your artwork.
If you were to do something like this in pencil and paper, you'll be basically, you know, drawing with pencil, erasing, sketching over, inking over, doing all of the things traditionally all in one layer. But in digital work, in Photoshop, um, you have layers to work with. One um, special thing about layers is that we also have access to opacity. So if I were to change the opacity of my green circle, I can in my red square as well. Um, I also have access to the different blend modes that Photoshop gives us. So normal mode is normal. It just gives us exactly what we ask for in terms of color and brush. But if we go down to multiply, you can see that it's actually um, interacting with uh, the layers below it. So the multiply actually uh, mathematically multiplies the color values um, together. So it usually makes it into a darker color. If we were to go to do something like lighten, then it'll actually lighten whatever we have underneath it. Same thing with color dodge and overlay or hard light. So I won't go over all of the different blending modes here, but I usually like to use multiply to add shading to my drawings, screen to add highlights, and overlay to do something like adding highlights but with more color. So that is pretty much it for layers. And yeah, we're, we're gonna go straight into um, using all of these tools together to make a really, really cool drawing. All right, so now that we understand the different tools that are available to us in Photoshop, I'm just going to go over the process of drawing. And I think for this, I'm just gonna keep it simple. We're gonna start with a sketch layer and then we're going to line it so that the lines are all nice and clean and then we're gonna give it some flat color. So I think what I will do for this tutorial is to draw a little cartoon duck. Um, ducks are one of my favorite animals. They are very cute and they have been stylized so many times. There are so many different little cartoon versions of ducks that I think I want to make my own version. So I'm going to start with a brush tool that is fairly small, very thin, and um, I'm just going to basically sketch out an idea for a duck. So let's see here. I'm going to draw quickly the head. So I'm going to keep keep my sketching really fast, really loose. So this is the head and the body. All right, we're going to have a little, a little pentagon pentagon duck here and then this is the two two feet and I'm gonna draw the eyes quickly and we have a beak and a little two arms and wings. I think I might um, also move this around. So one thing that you can do on the layer that you want to edit or move around, you can do control T and that would be the transform. And with transforming, you can move whatever you have or you can hover around the corners or around the edge and rotate it. So I'm gonna rotate it just a little bit. And you can press enter to confirm your selection. And now I'm just going to change the brush tool for my eraser and do this here. All right. So I think I like this sketch for my duck. We have our shape and then the two wings and feet and we have a little face. I think what I'm going to do is make it uh, make it angry. I think having like a really cute expression would be really nice. And I might also change... I might change the shape of the beak. I'll 
Okay. Okay. So I have a really very basic simple sketch of a duck that's kind of angry. I'm also going to give it a little bit of tuft up here. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to use press L for a lasso and I'm just going to change the shape of this. So I'm okay, so I'm pressing L for lasso. I'm going to select my face and you can hold control to cut it out, right? And once you keep holding the control and you can basically move it anywhere you want, move that selection. So I'm just going to change the position of my face. I might even do control T to rotate it just a little bit. And I like I like that so far. It's looking balanced. Okay. So for the sketching, I'm going to reduce my, opa my the opacity of this layer. I'm going to rename it. You can double click on layers to rename it. I'm going to call this sketch and then lower the opacity of that. And then I'm going to make a new layer with my brush tool. It's, it's still going to be still going to be that, but I might just make it thicker just a little bit. So using the open and close rectangular brackets on your keyboard to change the brush size. Um, you can also change the brush size up here. So you can change the size of your brush with this slider. Um, this is fine. And I'm going to increase the smoothing on my brush so that I can line the spark a little bit easier. Um, so using Alt and scroll wheel, I can zoom in and out. And I'm just going to line what I have here and try my best to get my lines in. It's gonna be a little shaky, but that's okay. One thing you can do if you're having trouble lining it because of how your arm or hand is angled is you can use R to rotate your canvas. So for example, this uh, foot here might have trouble lining it. So I'm gonna press R and this little gizmo shows up and I can hold and drag to rotate my canvas. And press B for brush. Okay. Same thing up here. Okay. Okay, so I have that. Uh, when you're rotating your canvas, you can also hold shift to kind of snap to these different angles. Uh, it makes it really easy to reset your rotation. All right, let's get these eyes in. I'm going to um, completely fill them as well because they're just little black beady eyes. Okay, and I think for the eyebrows, I'm going to leave them also filled in black. And now finally the beak. One little trick you can use is you can make a dot here, hold shift, and hit another spot to make a line. And I think this is a Photoshop only shortcut. Um, basically, if you were to hold shift, you can continue pressing on the canvas to make lines. Um, kind of went overboard with that. So I'm going to undo control Z to undo. And then I'm just going to finish this beak up. Okay. Now that we have our line, I'm going to disable our sketch layer and we have something like this. A little angry duck. <laughs> okay, now that we have our line layer pretty much done, I'm going to make a new layer underneath and call this color 
I'm gonna pick a really nice yellow color and using the fill tool or the G, the bucket tool, I'm just gonna fill this in. So we've got, um, yeah, just make sure that your tolerance is about 25 using contiguous and also all layers. So, okay, I'll make this top part white and then maybe get some orange in for our feet and beak. And we are pretty much done with our little drawing. <laughs> now, the reason that I have um, our line layer and color layer separate is that, you know, you always want some full control over your layers. Um, one thing that you can do with a line layer is you can lock it right up here, lock transparent pixels. And then you can go pick a really dark brown color and fill fill the line to be a, like a colored leather. There we go. So now our lines are all brown and that makes it look a little bit more interesting. Um, another thing with the color here is that you can add another layer on top of that. Right click it make it a clipping mask. And this is basically similar to locking the transparency of the layer. So when you color inside of that clipping mask, you can have another different color here. But one thing that you can do is set it to multiply, select a really light color and start to shade it. There you go. So I'm just gonna add a really simple shade to that. And I think that's done. <laughs> All right. So that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, just to kind of review what we've done here, we learned what the different tools were with the brush, eraser, and fill tool and selection tools. And then uh, we made a sketch layer. We lined it. And then we colored it. And for the very last thing we did is we added a new layer with a clipping mask and set it to multiply and picked a really light color and shaded it. So give it a really interesting shading effect. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Here are some additional resources that you can look up. Um, I know that Proko on YouTube makes fantastic art tutorials. He'll definitely go over the basics of drawing. Um, and then Nadia XL has tons of videos about drawing digitally. Wacom has some great tablets and Huion can be a cheaper alternative because Wacom is kind of like the standard, but Huion is a really good, really good brand as well.